it's not easy, but I believe that we are strong together. It's about time that we've ramped things up uh, all across the country. Just hoping that we can come to some type of agreement soon and everybody can just get back to regular life. We've been out for a while and we all still have to pay our bills. Get it done, close the deal, and let's get back to work. And welcome back. A week and a half in, and a third of the public service remains on strike. There were signs of movement today, with the government saying it had presented a new offer, but time is running out to reach a resolution today. And this afternoon, the union released a statement saying it hopes to continue bargaining this weekend. As the strike drags on and many government services remain stall, who's taking the public blame for the strike and how long can both the government and the union hold out? Let's take it to our panel of strategists. Greg McEachran has advised politicians at all three levels of government and worked on the communications team of two national election campaigns. Greg leans liberal. Fred Delore is the former director of political operations for Prime Minister Stephen Harper and was the 2021 conservative national campaign manager. He is now a managing partner with Delore Public Affairs. And Anne McGrath is national director of the N. DP. I'm going to start with you, because you have the shortest title. <laughs> um, how long, you know, we know that they, the, the, the strikers are getting paid still for two weeks, you know, as it, as it goes. They get paid twice a month, so mm -hmm. they're still on their pay from before the strike starts. But this week, this coming week, it's going to start phasing out, and they will have no salary, just strike pay, $75 a day if they show up. How long can they do this for? Well, I think my understanding is that they can go on for quite a while in terms of the strike fund that the, that the union has. And of course, uh, other unions will step in to help. There's a lot of solidarity, I think, amongst unions for this strike. And so uh, I think it, it can go on for a while. Now, the longer a strike goes on, the more tense it becomes. And so my worry is that, you know, with, uh, with the government right now, is that they have looked like they've been taking a very almost casual approach to this strike. It's very nonchalant. I think it's very significant. It's a big deal. It should be dealt with with a sense of urgency, and we're not seeing that kind of urgency. Uh, you know, just ev and even, you know, you saw last week in the House of Commons, uh, in question period, you saw the Prime Minister um, uh, in a very, I thought, condescending way, uh, trying to lecture uh, on how bargaining works, when he clearly didn't understand how bargaining works. Because when they got a new offer from the union, they weren't going to counter with another offer. That's how bargaining bargaining works. So I think little condescending speeches uh, to the NDP about how bargaining works backfires, especially when you're jetting off to New York and London. I, I, yeah, I, we'll get to that. I, I want to hear you on this. Is he, are they being too casual? I mean, this is just two units negotiating right now. There are other units of the public service strikes, uh, uh, unions that are going to be negotiating. So is the federal government being too casual about this, not taking it seriously enough? So, first of all, I don't have any real skin in the game here. When I hear that, other than as a taxpayer, um, when I hear some of the salaries that are being paid, and again, I mentioned this last week, you know, I'm in Ottawa, it's a very expensive city. When I hear some of the other things around return to the workplace, I, you know, in my previous job last fall, as a manager, I had to relate to my team that they were going to be expected back in the office six to eight days a month. And when we actually went back to the office, we found it was good, it was very collaborative, it's good to be with other people. But we, you really didn't have a choice. You know, if you want to continue to work for that company, this was, you know, there was going to be options, there was still going to be hybrid if you were ill, of course, things like that. So I think this is where, you know, Anne says there's, the government has a casual approach. So this is a city where the public broadcaster in radio um, does very well in the morning and at drive home. And I've been paying very close attention all week. And a lot of the union members, the people on strike, they seem to have a very casual approach. They are very aware, it's almost like they're cringing, that there's not a lot of public support out there for them. Yeah. There's stories today about people who are crossing the picket line, even though they're union members, because they don't want to do this anymore. So I think that's part of the problem. There's not a huge amount of public support. And if I was to compare on Wednesday the way the union leadership spoke, they're not, it, in, it's like in politics, you would be speaking to your base. He was still speaking to the union members where Mona Forte did very, something very smart with the open letters. So she's going over the heads of the union, right to the, directly to the members yeah. and to the public. So I just don't feel that there's this huge well of public support for them and I think the membership is aware of that. 
So, what would Pierre Poilievre do? I'm, I'm, I'm curious because, it, you know, this, this is being, we, we, we hear the questions and question periods. Sometimes they're a little attacks. They're doing their job, I guess. What they, would they do? That's a very interesting question because he refuses to say. Yeah, that's uh, why. Him in the caucus. I thought maybe he told you. Uh, <laughs> certainly hasn't. Because uh, I, I look, it, he's in an interesting position, Mr. Poliev himself, where he's an Ottawa MP, the that's number right. one employer of his uh, employee employer of his uh, constituents is the public service. So he's a, a not an uh, not a usual conservative leader in that regard. Usually we have uh, MPs from out of the capital. So he has a different perspective, uh, and I know this has impacted him in the past uh, when it comes to how we deal with the public service. But they're right now, the strategy of the Conservatives is to lay all the blame at Trudeau as much as they can. He's, you know, that's their talking points, that's what they're pushing out. They have no, basically it's their, their only way to fix this, they say, is throw out Trudeau and put him as Prime Minister, he'll fix it. They're not saying what that is. No, and as you said, you know, it, this is his riding. These, the, the, these public, these striking public servants live in his riding, so he's not going to say it's their fault. Exactly, that no. would be politically unsound uh, to do that. Yeah. Well, I want to go... Uh, there's go not ahead. a lot of evidence, though, that, 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 that public support isn't there for... The, uh, as a matter of fact, there's been a few polls that have shown pretty, a pretty good public support. That's yeah, true, but, but that, that was, was at the beginning yeah, of the strike. Thursday, so now, and, and, oh, now I'm one, I would love to see if indeed <clears throat> that kind of support stays on. I think uh, on the wages issue, for sure there is public support because I don't think yes. people think that, it, that, if, that, that the people that got us through the pandemic in, in, financial, in a financially whole kind of way should lose money. And, 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 and the fact that, that they are being offered less than the cost of living means that they are making less now but, than but they were at the beginning Anna's of the contract. But talking about that right now more than the union leadership, it seems. And I think that's part of the problem. You know, on Wednesday, I think you, you spoke about this as well, Joyce, when the union leadership said, we want the Prime Minister to come to the table. That's not the Prime Minister's job. And it just sounded ridiculous and they've dropped it since. So again, it, it doesn't feel... Yeah, because he called the President of the Treasury Board yeah, incompetent. And exactly, last last weekend. And that was right after a story came out, perhaps by coincidence, that a lot of the membership did not vote in this. She said that there was nothing more that she could do. So I think that the call for the Prime Minister was to give her a new mandate, right? The call was for, yeah. like for, 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 the, for there to be a new mandate for negotiating. And that was the Prime involved. Minister. Yeah, that was, right. that's the job of the